And uh, John Yap is the president uh, uh, of our board of directors um, and leads most of our, our webinars, does a great job, a lot of work, John. And um, we also have Allison Nurse, who's a nurse, who's a uh, director with, uh, with Oscar BC, volunteer director on the board, and Patty Sott as well, who is a director on the board. I think without any uh, any further um, to do, we'll let uh, we'll let John lead off on this. Uh, please mute your microphone if you haven't already, and uh, it's entirely your choice whether you uh, run your video or not. Thank you. you can go Thank ahead, you, John. Ken. Thank you, Kent. Yes, uh, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us on this uh, family day long weekend. Um, indeed, uh, Ken and Cindy are our only uh, paid employees for Oscar BC. All the executives are volunteers. Um, Allison um, is one of our newest board members, and uh, Patty, um, I just saw her video uh, a minute ago, is uh, yet another one. Um, and she'll be assisting me in the webinar with the Q&As and some of the presentation. Don't worry about taking detailed notes. The entire slide deck will be posted if it's not already on Oscar BC. And as mentioned, it's recorded for those who weren't able to attend or wish to review. Um, I'm just gonna switch over to my screen. Hopefully this works. And there we go. Are uh, you able to see page one? Perfect. Okay, indeed. Uh, so the speakers are myself, Patty Scott, Allison Nurse. Um, some of the slides are self-evident and uh, have a lot of details. So if I run over it quickly, um, uh, forgive me, but I think it should be self-explanatory and it'll be available for uh, reference later. Just gonna change slides, there we go. And there are disclosure statements. Um, none of us have any financial conflicts. As mentioned, we are all volunteer members of Oscar BC. Um, maybe I should start by acknowledging that uh, I live and work in the unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples, and in particular, the Cape Cod Nation. Um, there are going to be some specifics uh, of my presentation that refer to my setup. And as Ken mentioned earlier, there are many flavors of Oscar. Um, there are some definite common uh, denominators, but if you see something that you don't have, it's likely because it's been customized. So one of the blessings and perhaps the curse of Oscar. I use Grease Monkey, I use uh, Firefox and such, but I will endeavor to um, highlight if there's a significant difference and why. So reference it there. I hope to cover all of these things, um, basics, what everyone should know, and what I've learned along the way, some advanced features, and what we're all doing in the last couple of years is virtual prescribing, and knowing how to do this safely, properly, um, officially, by college rules, um, the hassle duplicate prescription, previously known as triplicates, and um, I'll reference some um, hopeful future development uh, later, uh, and then we'll have a Q&A session. So everyone knows this, to write a good prescription, you need certain details. And all these details outlined here are specified in the College of Pharmacists um, policy. Um, so I won't go into this, but it's pretty obvious. Um, the most significant problem we have now with all the virtual care is how do we get an official signature? How do we make it such that our prescriptions are created by us, are authentic, are not forgeries, um, and are unique? And um, there's been some back and forth about, you know, how to do it properly. Uh, each of us has probably figured out a way that we're comfortable doing it. And I'll just show you perhaps my way. It may not be the perfect way, but um, hopefully we'll all come to some easier solutions. Uh, the one thing I'll say repeatedly, and I'll sound like a broken record by the end of this is, please do not email your prescriptions to your patients. 
um, it's a definite no. So quick review, this is how you get to the prescription module from the chart uh, by either clicking on the bar, it's kind of this pink purple color or the plus sign. Um, and interestingly enough, the plus sign is that the various parts of Oscar do different things. So uh, if you haven't figured it out already, the plus sign opens all your long-term prescriptions and preloads them. And the bar um, just opens a blank slate to start from. You can also get to prescriptions from this search uh, window, uh, the icon on the right or the image on the right. And in some cases, the search window uh, makes sense. Earlier versions, if you haven't noticed, doesn't allow you to paste the prescription into the chart and that would be a big deficiency. Uh, if you can't do that, I'd advise against uh, using this method. Um, in my system, the well system, I thought that was still the case. I tried it yesterday, they fixed it uh, unbeknownst to me. So that's good. Try it out yourself. If it works, you could do it this way. And this is what a prescription should look like in that preview screen. And this is my screen. There's my signature and so on. Um, there is a button on that top right that allows you to go back one step. I uh, didn't know that was there. Um, early days when you start from scratch, your 10 prescriptions that you had pre-filled painstakingly would disappear and you had the pleasure of starting over from scratch. This allows you to go right back and make adjustments. Always, always, always print and paste to the EMR. If you don't do that, your prescription stays in the prescription module. It's a parallel charting system in, in a way, but it needs to be in the so-called uh, toilet roll, the progress notes. So please do that. This page doesn't always close automatically. You'll have to shut it down manually. You'll see there's a preferred pharmacy option that is different in the different versions of Oscar. And uh, it's necessary if you're gonna do faxing, whether it's manual faxing or built-in faxing. Uh, I have some examples of that. And uh, there's a note section where you can add details. And in my particular case, I like to add such things as timestamps, folio numbers for duplicates, etc. Here's an example of a uh, preview screen where the fax uh, system displays. There's a signature box where you can generate a unique digital signature and you sign it with your mouse. Um, and um, in this case, it's actually disabled. So it's ghosted out. Um, here's another version where it is active. Uh, thanks to Dr. Herb Chang for sharing this with me. Um, you choose your pharmacy, you uh, sign and off you go. You click on the, uh, here I'll show you there, facts and paste, pasting is important and you get this very satisfying fax sent to pharmacy. And that is designated by your preferred pharmacy option, which I will cover a bit later. So let's write a prescription. Um, we do this all the time. It was pretty simple, straightforward when we had paper prescriptions. Write the name of the prescription, write the instructions, tell how many you want and off you go. Except the pharmacist will know how to figure this out, but not necessarily Oscar. Uh, in this case, there's a line down here, uh, here, that says um, method, root frequency, uh, max, min, so on. Um, that will auto-populate if you write the instructions properly here. Um, it won't if you keep it minimalist, like three daily. Uh, so. The key thing here is to give enough instructions so that both Oscar and the pharmacist know. And I have to say that there's some background work that's been done uh, over the years that has made this a lot more accurate just by texting, uh, text, um, typing the text. Oscar has um, a way of interpreting your instructions. So just to highlight what was on the screen, allergies show up, uh, the name of the prescription, includes these prefixes, these annoying generic company prefixes. I would encourage you to choose the generic name of the drug, uh, but not uh, one that has a prefix. Why? You sort by name and the prefix will sort to uh, the top of the alphabet, A, uh, which is the first choice in many cases. And I've seen um, maybe OpenOSP OSP has this, where it, it pushes the um, generic names to the bottom and leaves the generic company names rather, 
and leaves just the plain generic names to the top. And the one you choose is important for other features that you'll see later. Okay, um, you can see that the maximum, minimum is zero. Um, Oscar recognizes uh, words like one or two, but I encourage you to use numerals, uh, actual digits, um, and even fractions 0.5 for a half, 0.25 for a quarter. It will understand that and it will calculate that. Uh, the most important detail turns out to be the duration, and you'll see why later. Oscar will actually calculate how long a prescription should last, and it has implications for long-term and short-term drugs. This is the uh, long-term box, which you can manually tick, um, and there are different ways of uh, doing that from another screen, and I'll show you later. The perfect prescription, this has a lot of detail. Take three tablets PO daily for 10 days. Um, the 30 number here, if you actually wrote this on a prescription, is auto-populated once you tab forward from, where's my mouse, from this screen, okay? You can add units manually, you can add repeats, and so on and so forth. So this is much better, um, not just for the pharmacist, but definitely for Oscar. Um, I'm just going to... Um, highlight a couple of other things uh, with these arrows, the preferred pharmacy, these items more, F for favorite. It may be located in different areas if you have um, open OSP or earlier version, my version being version 19, the so-called Oscar Pro version. There's a little question mark and this little red asterisk, all of which uh, we become evident later. Maybe you already know because you've uh, uh, stumbled onto it. Okay. PRN medications, where there's a range. Um, this is for analgesics. It's an ad range, one to two, and that's what that maximum and minimum uh, mean. Um, and if you actually uh, tab forward from this uh, instruction, it'll calculate the maximum amount. So in this case, two tablets times three in a day times 10, that'll give you 60. So 60 will show up in the quantity if you don't want to give that many, change it. Um, in the past, when you refill this, it would automatically go back to 60. Sometimes if you put, oops, go back the slide, uh, the number and then add tabs, it would freeze it as a text screen instead of a numeric calculated screen. Uh, and again, some of the more recent updates will freeze the numbers so that you don't inadvertently give, you know, many hundreds of Tylenol because I do want to set the date and that's important as I mentioned earlier. All right, um, allergies. Uh, this is a very important uh, corollary to your prescription, obviously. Uh, keep it up to date. Uh, this is the latest version. Um, just make a note that there's some quick pick items. No known drug allergy is valid to add. Add as much detail as you can because um, that's gonna be helpful. That little red star opens the box um, to any previous instructions that may have been written for a particular drug, in this case, penicillin D. So if you chose ACT lisinopril and nobody else did, there won't be any other instructions. So make it a good habit to choose the generic without the generic company prefix. Now, the one downside to this, um, cue or reminder boxes, there's no way of editing it. So in a way you have to get it right the first time because you can't delete it. Um, so uh, there are other cues. Uh, I'll go back one. What I did here is I chose the very top one, um, which has a special instruction. If I click on that, this is the result. It adds the other line that says wait for throat swab. This is a an extra box where you can add additional information. It can be very useful. You can add such things as um, tapering instructions, titration instructions. If you use a semicolon, it would put a line space. And you can get very clever with this. You can do such things as, um, uh, uh, oh, I'll show you in just a, a minute. Um, the more button, which may be at the top right or maybe lower down, opens this box, which provides some other additional features, which I honestly don't use so much. Um, one of the things I have tried is the start date. If you want to delay the prescription, that may be important because of uh, patients wanting to get their prescriptions early. I'll reference that a little bit later. 
Um, Oscar just assumes that, you know, they fill the prescription the same day, and that's not always true. So you can't always rely on the duration based on Oscar um, because of patients, you know, sitting on the prescriptions and so on, or the pharmacy not filling it right away. Um, favorites. Uh, if you have a complex uh, set of instructions, uh, you can make it a favorite and save it. So one of the uh, nice things about that is you can tag it with a name. The name is by default just the name of the drug, but much more useful is why you're using it. For example, penicillin V for strep, maybe write down strep or for shingles, cold sores, etc. cetera. Um, the favorites is very useful for new drugs that um, aren't yet in your database. So I had to look up um, Ozempic for weight loss recently. It's not in our database. Um, so when you prescribe Wigovi, for example, just save that as a favorite so you can get to it later more easily. Um, the favorite list is one of those things that you want to get right the first time because editing it is a bit tricky. This is what the edit um, page looks like. My go-to is just to delete it and start over again, resave it. Um, apparently, you can share your favorite list with others. And if anyone knows how to do this consistently, please tell me because I'm still trying to figure that out. The color coding is based on the duration. I said this earlier, the most important thing it seems is to set how long you expect the prescription to run. If you wonder why all yours are gray, you may not have set a date. They all expired the next day, even though you gave enough supply for three months, six months, or a year. Um, you can access the clues uh, by clicking the profile legend, and it looks like that, and it explains uh, what all the colors mean. Um, blue being the most important one, because those are prescriptions you expect to be there forever, show up in your e-forms, they'll show up in your consult module and such. If you have just prescribed a drug that's long term and it doesn't show you a consult module, it's probably because you didn't set the duration. Custom drugs, yes, it's available. I had to do that for Wigovi recently, Shingrex when it first came out. Uh, use that as the last resort because you will get this dire warning that you cannot do certain things. You cannot uh, do allergy checks and such. But hey, if you're compounding a drug, a calm, um, uh, cream, um, yes, this is the way to do it. And then, of course, save it as your favorite. So uh, this is the custom drug uh, um, example that Herb Chang has provided me. It takes advantage of the extra instructions. This is an exercise prescription. If you do this with all the semicolons in place, you get a prescription that looks like that. Kind of a cool thing to give. Um, I think Dr. Chang uses this a fair bit. You might find it useful too. Okay, some advanced features. The long-term, short-term um, designation. This is the uh, well view where LT meds, this column here, as a yes or a no. Um, in other uh, versions of Oscar, it may have an asterisk or it may change to LT. Um, and uh, that was problematic because it was easy to go in one direction, but not backwards. This version allows me just to toggle it with a click. Uh, so that's really nice. Why is it nice? Um, it be it's because it'll always show up in your e-forms and your consults. You can also do it when you prescribe. Here, there's the checkbox. Um, earlier versions had it such that if you click any kind of repeat, even one repeat, it would automatically set the long-term box. And that was a, a, a bit annoying because uh, you may not have wanted it as such. Um, I would encourage you to use the discontinue button here if you actually discontinue a drug or if you uh, change the dose of a drug or... Um, you know, if, you, uh, if the patient uh, decides to stop it, uh, or your pharmacist, um, not your pharmacist, your specialist has stopped it on your behalf. And that's basically to keep your prescription module up to date. You get some drop down options, um, and it's alphabetical. So the top is adverse reaction, maybe the most common reason. Add as much detail as relevant. When you save this, it goes into the chart. For your reference, and especially for your partners and whoever else is uh, looking at the chart, uh, it's be helpful. 
Um, here's an example of bad housekeeping. Uh, the top drug here was prescribed, and I, I printed this recently I, uh, in November, and it should only last for 30 days. And as of this week, it's still uh, in blue, it's still active. It should have run out. And in the consult module, it's still there along with Flonase, along with this Razzalaz drug. And that's because it's set at, as a long-term. So it's just gonna keep showing up. Um, it should have expired. This should be checked as a no. So do your housekeeping. That's really important. You can also add drugs that other physicians have started. And my uh, approach is not to use the more button, but just to write it in as a prescription. Here, this beta blocker was prescribed by the cardiologist. I gave this sample of a puffer. Uh, why do this? If indeed the patient needs the refill, it's already 90% done. Um, and uh, if your partner wonders what sample you gave to the patient, it's there. Um, so yeah, uh, keep that. Now, I would not uh, hit save and print. I would just hit save. Let's see if I can show that um, here. So instead of uh, save and print, because you're not going to print that uh, update, you just save it. So it's in there as a prescription in the prescription module. All right. So there's your exercise prescription again. And there's a long term housekeeping. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead a little bit because I got to the wrong slide. Reprint. Uh, if you haven't discovered this, this can be extremely useful. This is for that patient who says, I've lost my prescription. And instead of rewriting the prescription, in which case, officers sometimes will cross out the original, put up the new, and say re-prescribe. It makes it a bit confusing. I would hit reprint. Uh, reprint does not paste into the chart, but it will reprint the prescription, in this case, the hydromorph, exactly as you had written it back in November, for example. And there's an extra hydromorph in here, which uh, doesn't make any sense. And that's because uh, when I look deeper, I had to click um, a different view. The default view here is current. If you hit uh, all, you will see all the prescriptions, the ones that have been deleted, discontinued, um, expired. So if you are looking for something that you remember should be there, and you can't see it, it's probably in the all view. And in this case, there's the all view, and there's the hydromorph from October, and that's why it shows up here. It was crossed off because it's re-prescribed. Um, I ran into this recently where prescription didn't make any sense. Um, be careful doing this, because what you paste into the chart may be the old instructions, and that's what your uh, partners will see. Oh, and also, because it doesn't paste, you want to reference this in your note, okay? Say so re-prescribe, uh, reprinted prescription from whatever date. So this is the reprint. Uh, it does not allow you to paste, but you can print. I recommend you use this button and not the print full page. It's a funny um, uh, way of uh, printing it out. Um, I add details such as prescription time, where I fax it to, and in this case, being a duplicate prescription on controlled substance, I indicate I will fax and mail and even put in the folio number. A lot of details, but again, this allows me to authenticate this easily if there's ever a question. Um, virtual prescribing, uh, we're all doing it, um, figuring out our own way, um, hopefully figure out a reliable, easy way. Rule number one, I said it earlier, do not email your prescriptions. It looks weird when the patient prints it out. It looks like they just photocopied it, et cetera. Rule number two, how do you make a signature that is acceptable? Um, the pharmacists have rules. A lot of the rules about signatures actually have to do with audit and uh, payment and, and nobody wants to get audited, especially pharmacists. And um, there is a college perspective and I'll show you some of the communication I've had. Um, details on rule number two. Um, this is a uh, option two, actually, if you went to that website that says a digital saved image is allowed as long as you can make it unique and secure and it tells you how. Um, you can read this on your own time. Um, this is what the college said. Um, put your pen to paper, which doesn't make any sense. 
because if you want to keep an audit trail of that, you're almost obligated to scan that paper, upload that paper, give the paper away or however you want to, um, however you want to deal with it. But there is a second option, the digital image of a signature that requires a date stamp, timestamp, password protection, all of which are actually built into Oscar. Um, and this is what they said. Ultimately, it is the professional judgment of the pharmacist that determines whether they'll accept your prescription or not. If they have questions, they should be able to contact you and authenticate that prescription. Um, and however you do it to make it easier, do so. So that's why I include all this. Um, so it's a lot easier to authenticate if you have a timestamp in your prescription that is pasted. Remember pasting all your prescriptions right into the chart. I won't have any problems uh, if the pharmacist asks, hey, did you write this prescription just by the timestamp? Nobody else can put that into your, into your EMR. So uh, you have to get that prescription into the hands of the people who need it, but not by email. If you're in the office and you have a setup like I do where the stamp signature is always there, I sign it again with ink, obviously. Um, and then the patient better not try and photocopy that because it would look odd. If you fax it, keep a preferred pharmacy list. There are different ways of doing so. Uh, I'll show you some examples. And the duplicate prescription is the most uh, tedious workflow because the actual paper itself has to go to the pharmacy eventually. Um, so there you go. So here's that preferred pharmacy. This is the uh, um, well classic view. Um, you click on the bar here and it opens up this screen and uh, you can choose. You can uh, upvote your uh, favorite pharmacy, your preferred pharmacy. You can have a select Okay. Um, this is the pro view of the well version. It looks a lot neater. It's um, um, I kind of like this, but I don't use this because it limits me in the way I do my workflow. Um, oh, jumped ahead a bit. Um, I'll, I'll come back to this in a bit. Triple get prescriptions. This is the latest way you can create a triplicate prescription. And I have an example of that here if I can show it on my screen. The college will give those old um, prescription pads that we all know and love. They also give you this special paper, which is exactly the same thing uh, that you can feed into your printer and then have Oscar printed out for you. Uh, but of course, you need to apply a wet signature to that. Um, the workflow for this is awful. It's atrocious. Um, the e-form looks like this, and I shared it with one of the clinic. I'm happy to post it for those who want to tweak it and see if they can make it work. Um, there's lots of uh, problems I see with this, uh, not the least of which is um, they expect you to keep this paper in a printer that's locked away. Um, but, you know, we'll figure this out eventually. Probably it'll be obsolete by the time they have e-prescribing. So how can we help our pharmacists? Well, um, obviously we have to do things by the rules. And here are some of the rules. Um, you cannot do you know, repeats on narcotics, especially duplicates. There's ways of doing it. Uh, maybe Allison will um, describe that in further detail. Um, you can fax your prescription. There are certain items that they want. Um, please don't let your uh, patients um, um, go away with the expectations that as soon as they show up, it'll be there. Um, put in details such as um, you've changed the dose. Um, and uh, um, that's in the instruction line. Uh, why is that helpful? Well, if you enjoy getting called by your pharmacist to clarify, then don't. <laughs> but if you'd rather uh, just get on with your day, put it in the notes. And actually, it gets pasted into the chart itself so that you know why uh, why it was done and so will your partners. Um, I think Allison wanted me to um, comment that special authority doesn't mean it's free. There's still the deductible. Make sure your signatures are there in some fashion, okay? The uh, full set of rules are here at this website and there's um, a list of the uh, duplicate drugs. Sorry, Allison, if I stole some of your thunder, but <laughs> you'll have a chance to uh, jump in later. <laughs> Um, 
And here's some interesting facts that if you've been around as long as I have, you may have figured this out over time. Um, but um, it's important to know. Now, one thing I learned just reading this is your prescriptions are good for a year, the year uh, a year from when they were written. So when your patients come in early for their uh, prescriptions and you kind of hum and haw and says, well, you know, I don't want to come back. Um, the date on that prescription is important. Um, the uh, the date on the duplicate prescriptions are critical because they will automatically expire within five days of the date written, which is maybe why you want to um, post date it if it's appropriate. Um, and others there, and, and maybe uh, Allison can comment further. So there's hope for the future. I'm not gonna take the time to show you the video in item two, but do have a look. This is not yet in play, but it could be how any prescription module could look, not just in Oscar, but in any EMR. E-prescribing is um, talked about. Uh, I think it is being tested. It will eliminate a lot of the things that we have headaches with, especially signatures. And uh, uh, maybe not part of prescribing, but important for all of us to consider is get PharmaNet access in some manner. I think it's even a college requirement. If you renew your um, uh, license recently, um, you'll see there's a uh, reference question to that. Uh, I can't um, promote that more. So the takeaway pearls for me, once again, is don't email your prescriptions. Do paste all your prescriptions. Um, do write uh, the instructions such that both Oscar and the pharmacist can understand. Um, use safe language. That's what the asterisk is for. Abbreviations um, that you know, others may not and there are safer ones to use reference in the ISMP website. Have a look. Um, do uh, uh, make your prescriptions easy, to authenticate, harder to forge. Um, I mean, use the timestamp um, that you can create uh, easily. There's that you know start and stop time function in the e-chart. And keep your um, lists updated, do your housekeeping so that drugs show up when they should and disappear when they should. And here are the list of resources that I've referenced um, within this talk. And I did what I was hoping to do. I kept uh, uh, a lot of um, open time for Q&A. So, and Allison, I apologize once again. I know you wanted to jump in there. Um, you may do so now. Uh, and, and if there are questions, um, I'm happy to uh, um, um, uh, take care of them now. I'm just going to stop sharing. We do have sharing. questions, but we'll let Allison take her turn and then we'll go through the questions with you. They're great questions. Okay. That's okay, John. I mean, you pretty much covered it all. A couple other things some pharmacists have mentioned to me too is just if you um, fax a prescription to the wrong pharmacy, call them so they don't keep it on file because otherwise there'll be two copies of prescriptions out there. And if you make a mistake on your fax, uh, some kind of error, like something you want to change with the dose or something that wasn't right with the prescription, don't just fax the correct one over, call them and tell them the first one wasn't right as well. Otherwise they'll, they won't know what to do with which one's correct. So that was some other ones. And there was another comment that said, oh, if you do make a note on the prescription, like that you are increasing or decreasing the dose, make sure you, re you remove that note when you write the next prescription because sometimes the notes carry forward. And um, if you're giving someone an extended quantity or early fill for vacation, just make a note on the prescription so that they're aware because there is a special intervention code they have to use. So that was kind of some extra things that came up in the last few days. I had um, lots of comments from friends saying, oh, I'd love to, love to share some tips. And most of it, as John said, is because of audits. So um, they're not trying to be picky with regulations or government rules, and they are payer rules that require them to do these things. Yeah, very, very helpful. Um, for those patients who want to um, get the prescriptions early, just to hold on to them, that one year rule applies. We all kind of know that. The only exception may be birth control pills, which they allow up to two years, which was actually great when the PAP interval was two years, but now it's three years, so that might be obsolete. Um, and the fact that the pharmacies are not going to dispense a supply of pills if they know that you have more than a 14-day supply remaining based on their calculations. Um, so the prescription sits there, and I don't know if this is true, but I just get the feeling that um, those on-hold prescriptions get lost, 
and you get another fax asking for the thing that you just did, which is um, maybe a good reason to reprint that prescription <laughs> and make a note of that in your chart. Okay, if we want to start with the questions, uh, we have one from Christy Sutherland. And uh, she said if she'd like to know if there's a way to order the drugs in the med function by what they're indicated for. So an example would be all her puffers grouped together, her cardiac meds. So she doesn't have to scan through the whole list to get a full picture of each condition. So that would be an interesting feature actually. Right now, the prescription module will sort by the date you prescribe. Uh, maybe I will share my screen again and go to test Andy. So this is just my test patient. It's got a lot of stuff in it um, because I test all my e-forms. Here's the prescription module. Hopefully you can see that. Let me make sure I can see that too. Um, and you can see uh, it, the automatic uh, setting or default setting is current view and date entered. Um, you can change this to uh, start by medication name. And so all the A's show up here. So if you're looking for Ramipril, um, you would look down in the R's. Okay. Or you can use the uh, browser function of control find or command uh, find to find it. There. So here are the bunch of Ramipril's. But um, you would not expect to see uh, ac lisinopril here or ac ramipril here um, because it's out of a sequence. Currently, there's no easy way of designating why uh, you've prescribed something. I mean, you can put it in the instruction and you can sort by that, but to group them, I don't think there's a feature yet. So it's a, it's a great idea. Uh, and maybe, maybe you'll see hints of that in the... Uh, future prescription module video that I have uh, referenced. So have a look there. John, if I can jump in, it's Herb Chang. Um, oh, Herb. I put something in the chat. Um, you can sort of sort your medications by um, diseases. <clears throat> when you refill your medications, the order that you actually click the medications for refill get sorted. So the order that you click is actually the order that it prints and then it will sort it that way for you in the future. So you can sort of manually sort them on refill. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and Christy as well is also wondering how you can change the dose of a medication in an efficient way. She says, I find I erroneously will have Oscar prompt me to refill old strengths of a medication, like Trazodone 50 and then Trazodone 100, both up for refills. When the patient was on 50 in the past, there you go. Indeed, that's my reference to housekeeping. If you have up titrated a drug, you should discontinue the previous dose um, in your chart. And when you rewrite, uh, when you write the prescription rather with the new dose, reference that uh, at least the first time so that your pharmacist is not gonna question your, your change. And it wasn't a mistake, it was deliberate. Um, and, and then you will lose the lower dose because it's being discontinued and you will keep the higher dose. You have to rewrite the prescription. You can't just change the number in that line. As soon as you add any characters in that search line, it makes that drug a custom drug. That has to be left intact, okay? That's the wrong way of changing the dose. Um, and as, as Allison mentioned, the next time you refill it, maybe delete those comments because um, it'll confuse your pharmacist and you'll get a phone call. Save those phone calls, okay. Uh, Dr. Kalili says, how do I find out when the drug was prescribed for the first time? Well, you can find out when you prescribed it or when your office prescribed it just by uh, searching. Uh, again, assuming that you know, you chose a generic drug without the prefix. Um, I think I can just show you. I'll have to share my screen again. We'll just jump back and forth here a little bit. So um, the uh, setting here, default setting would be date prescribed. Oop, this is the first date. So here's uh, 2014 when I first made this chart. 
And there's um, uh, earlier this week when I was playing with amoxicillin. All right, so if you wanna look for a drug such as uh, when I first prescribed Dilaudid, click on the drug. And then you'll see all instance of that drug with that name at that dose. So the first time would be uh, December 31st. Um, let's reload. What about quetiapine? Just, just click on the name of the drug. There we go. Um, so that's the easiest way of finding it. But remember, it's name specific. If there was an act quetiapine, it won't find it necessarily. So uh, let me see if I can demonstrate that. I'll try Ramapril because that was here. Here we go. So it's all the act Ramapril, but the plain Ramapril won't show up. So if you really want to find all of them, then you'll have to use the power of your browser and hit control find and look for Ramapril. And it highlights it. And you can just, you know, scroll down, 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 down. So it's awkward, but you can do it. And, and heck, if you print the chart, the entire chart um, as a um, PDF, you know, if you print here, and in well, um, you have something called show all notes. I hope you can see that. If you click that, it opens another window and it shows all your notes. And because it's all digital, you can search for control find Ramapril. And you can see all of these uh, comments that have Ramapril in there. Um, this is a discontinuation. I stopped it because it was too costly and so on and so forth. So yes. Um, this is where, if you haven't figured it out already, spelling counts. Because if you wrote something in your chart and you spelled it incorrectly, you wouldn't necessarily know how to search for that um, um, misspelling. So use your spell checker. <laughs> um, that's the general comment. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, Lauren is asking, is there a way to see the date the next refill is due? Oh, yes, absolutely. And of course, that assumes that you set an interval. Um, I should just keep my screen on. <laughs> All right, so let's jump to the prescription screen, which is there. Uh, not a good example here because everything says zero. Um, let's jump to uh, date entered. So days to expire. Oh, here, here's the example. Hydrochlorothiazide prescribed, uh, well, um, February 6th for 90 days. I set it for three months with zero repeat. So it should run out in another 76 days. So this is what Oscar expects if they filled it the same day and got it the same day and they didn't have surplus remaining from before and so on and so forth. So you, it's a guide. It's not an exact science. Even the information on PharmaNet may not be exact because I have seen pharmacists post their dispense uh, in advance of the patient picking it up. Obviously, if they don't have it, they're not taking it, and yet it shows up. So it gives you some clues that it is not the be all and end all. So you kind of have to consider the variations, the variables that you have no control over. So yes, that shows up here. And this is blue because there's more than 30 days remaining. This is orange because it's less than 30 days. And these have run out because they're gray. Okay, John, excellent. can you show it on the, sorry, John, can you also show it on the, um, uh, the basic um, uh, chart page? You can oh. hover over the name of the drug itself, right? Yes, you can. So um, this is the chart. Here's the medication. If I hover over a mop cell, you can see details that will eventually pop up. It was prescribed uh, February 13th and it should run out February 20th because it was for seven days. There's your interval. Here's your Tylenol 3, uh, your Ramapril, and so on. And all the blue ones still show up, even this one, which was prescribed um, in May of 2021 and only for three months. It should have run out, but it's blue because it's long term. Herb, if you're still listening, is it any easier now for you to make long-term short-term? No, unfortunately, we're, we still have that issue. Hopefully, you get okay. that fixed. 
So I should demonstrate how easy it is now. Hang on. So Herb's on so, open and you are on well? I on well. So here's that rammer pearl that should have disappeared. Um, ooh, it says no. Oh, I know. Sorry. There were three repeats on there that I missed. Um, so let me just switch to all the long term. This is great for housekeeping. I just changed the view to long term and acute. So here's the acute and here's the long term ones. Um, so hydrochlorothiazide, I just rewrote that. So this is not the best example, uh, unfortunately. Um, let me see if I can find a better one. Let's go to another test patient, Johnny Rotund. So here's Flonase from over a year ago, and it should have run out. Um, and in his prescription module, Flonase still shows up. There it is. I hover over it. And it shouldn't be there because I expect it to run out. So in order to make this not long-term, I just click and it becomes short-term. And it will hopefully change here when I refresh. Gone. So this is the way it should have worked uh, from day one. And hopefully it will do so for those who are not on a well system once they get the upgrade. Awesome. So Jody K, are you able to just run through electronic signatures again? Can a, can a saved e-sig be used if the stamp if the time stamped is there? So uh, let's uh, let's reprint something here just um, to see what happens. Um, this is Johnny Rotund. Um, I haven't really done much with him. Here's a reprint. Um, so I guess I was playing with this hydromorph a bit. So to reprint, I would click on the name, not the print. Um, actually, I'm not sure what this does, but I'm not going to play with it right now. So that should queue up with uh, November the 17th. And sure, there it is. Uh, it has the exact same instructions. Actually, this is one of my slides. Um, I could change the instructions. If I needed to change the pharmacy, I could change the pharmacy. Um, this is the preset chosen top, you know, pharmacy uh, listed for this patient. And if I start typing in here, it changes that. So if you didn't intend to do that, please don't <laughs> click there. All right. Um, my signature stamp is set. Um, I have to turn that feature off in order to have that, um, that the input field where you can draw in your prescription. Okay, so if I was doing this from scratch, let's close that. And I'll just do something a little bit less controversial. Um, say I just wanted to refill Keflexin. Re-prescribe. Um, I did put in the instructions that it was for acute tonsillitis. Uh, hopefully I spell that correctly. Um, in the actual chart, I would click on the timestamp paste. So there's your timestamp. I put in RX, the prescription time, copy and paste that. This is my workflow, keep that in mind. I would uh, save and print because I want that preview screen. I would add the prescription time, add the pharmacy information. I will and this is what I can do in the pro view. I can highlight that so I can paste fast blend and drugs. And the way I have to do it is I don't have a uh, fax setup here. Um, that is something you can activate and set up. Um, I'm, it's not for this webinar, but I think uh, it may have been referenced previously. Ask your provider about it. And I know OpenOSB has this set up. I know the other well sites have it set up, but this is where I want to fax it to. So I've highlighted that. And of course, print and paste. So this is how it looks. Once you print and paste, this is the actual prescription. Hopefully, just drag that over here. Can't see it yet. Oh. Hang on. So that's the actual prescription, right? And I would uh, fax that 
using, um, in my case, Ring Central. So I copy the fax number here, and it confirms that it is London Drugs. Click that, and this would be saved into a folder, paste it. Of course, if you have it set up within Oscar, it's that much easier. There would be fax and paste. Click that, and you're done. And, and that, that automatically paste to the encounter. You don't actually have to go to the encounter and do control V or anything. No, you don't, because I think I've already clicked that because I created the uh, preview. So let me close that and I'll show you right there. It's not really working on my version right now, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I got a bit OCD, so I don't like this repeated. So I actually take that out because, you know, on that old paper chart from 15 years ago, I put a big RX um, so that if I was looking for a prescription, you could see it readily. Well, with the RX here, you can search for the RX colon, be consistent. So you can, you know, search for that when you um, are looking for all your prescriptions. Um, there's just different ways of making it easier to retrieve information, as long as you have a system and you stick to it. And John, can I just add something about the e-signatures? Because it is the sensitive one for pharmacists. Sure. Is that you still may get phone calls even with the timestamp, just because it's up to the pharmacist to verify that it is correct and that it's a proper user login that no other user could go and use a, uh, an image of a signature. So there is still some, some checks depending on how the system prints it out where a pharmacist may still wanna call and verify versus if you have a signature pad where you're doing it an electronic signature, there's less controversy with that one. Even though the college rules say both are allowed, there's just still some, a lot of times it has to do again with the third party payer audits and the validity of a signature. Uh, completely agree. And I think uh, we have to work together with our pharmacists so that their job and our job is made easier, easier to authenticate and harder for those um, bad apples to um, mess with. I mean, if, if, you know, you prescribe 10 Tylenol 3s and somehow it ends up as 100 um, and it looks like somebody scribbled it in with a pen or pasted it, I, I think the pharmacist should um, wonder about that, especially if all the previous ones were 10 such and that comes down to professional judgment yeah all right well we have Alice. sorry can i can i just or go ahead I'm sorry yeah. make a comment um john and i have had um significant discussions about this e-signature um and i would argue that the time it takes you to hand sign on your mouse a, a wet signature is much faster than what john does with his cut and paste and all the time so just my mm. But I don't cut and paste. Well, uh, sorry, I cut and paste the timestamp. Um, but you That's should know, I mean. you should know that in the latest version of Oscar that's going to be released uh, from Ontario, the timestamp is included automatically. Oh, neat. So somebody has gotten the memo and getting, you know, up to, to the 21st century here. Wonderful. This next one's for Allison. It says, I think the points that Allison made are excellent and helpful, but I already forgot them. Can she go through those again uh, or make some notes in the chat for them? <laughs> what I can do is try to create a little summary document and maybe share those with the attendees so you can take a look. And they are, again, you still have to work with your pharmacist on like how, how they do things, but these are just some tips that I've heard from others. So yeah, I can make a little summary document. And we can keep that updated um, on Oscar BC. I took um, those comments that Allison posted to me by email and, and I put them into the slides. So many of those are referenced there. Um, and indeed the web um, links will show you the rules that the pharmacists have to play by. And indeed there is a reference to timestamps, uniqueness of signatures and what makes them unique. And uh, sorry, signature stamps. They, they indeed um, reference that directly. Okay, so Nick says, how do I add a preferred pharmacy? Sorry if you covered it already, uh, but it's the preferred pharmacy I would like to know about. Yeah. Sure, um, this is the well version here. You have to go to the prescription module. My screen's still on, right? Yeah, okay. no, yeah. It's, um, it's, it's, it's. So when I click on preferred pharmacy, I get this view. And uh, unfortunately or fortunately, each of these pharmacies are manually added. Um, so you can see I have um, a uh, pattern 
where I put in the name and the um, the location number. So for example, all the Loblaws, which are superstores, but their official name is Loblaws, have a unique identifying number. So if I wanted to search for London drugs in this version, I would just start typing the name London. So all the London drugs are here. And I see this one snuck in with a different format. Somebody else did that. If I want to filter down to just the ones in Vancouver, I would type that. And then only the Vancouver ones show up and also West Vancouver, okay? Uh, and then I would choose there, uh, London Drugs number four, uh, which is here, I guess it might've been there already. If I wanted that one to be the, the main one, the first one, I would have to vote it up to the top, London Drugs number four. And then I found something that was really important, this little button, I just found it this week. Uh, maybe it was always there, but what this does is that it updates this page so that it shows London Drugs number four. And the reason this is a headache for me was if I changed the pharmacy uh, location here, anything that I had created as a prescription disappeared and I had to start from scratch and nobody wants to do that. You can also change it from here. So I go back to wellness and here it is there. I don't know why it pops up, but it is now retained. So um, whatever the deficiency was previously has been addressed, at least in the well version of Oscar Pro. Fantastic. Oh, uh, I want to point out something else. Uh, and Herb knows this all too well. Um, that uh, if you make a mistake here, or if you need to edit, uh, say this very first one, you're able to edit and change that. Um, I found out that in this version, in the well version, you can't have a hashtag. So you can't have London drugs number four. That's why all you see are just the numbers. It, it messes up the system. So we had them take all the hashtags out. The key uh, element needed is that fax number. And previously you couldn't have brackets and such. Um, now, I think they also updated it so that it will accept you know, brackets for the area code. Um, and most importantly, you can delete the ones that are actually not, not necessary, not required. Uh, one of the OSPs thought they'd be clever and put in all the shoppers drug marks, all of them oh. across BC. Um, I think there's probably a couple hundred. <laughs> so imagine looking for the one shoppers that you want in the US when you have Prince George and Victoria. Um, so I don't think that was such a great idea unless you can filter it, okay? And Herb, I don't know how easy it is to filter yours. Um, it may not be. It's fairly easy. You enter the CD first and then the, the name of the drugstore. Yeah. Um, this is great compared to the previous where you couldn't easily edit or delete. Um, the Oscar Pro View version that I hinted at that had those fancy colors is even better. Um, but um, I'll think about moving over once they put in the timestamp. <laughs> okay. okay. Next. So can you give some advice navigating pharmacy refill requests from pharmacies? Oh, isn't that the bane of our existence? <laughs> you get that fax, you know, 10 drugs. Um, and uh, um, even though I think in my profile at every pharmacy says no fax or phone refills, and yet they just do it. Okay, in the old days, that was actually a preferred method that enabled a physician not to have to write by hand on that little EDB prescription pad. They would just take that, sign it, fax it, and just throw it in the chart. Okay, well, those were old days. We have an EMR. I would look at the list. I don't have a good example because these are pretend patients. And, you know, compare the lists with what you have here and just check the ones you want to refill and make you know any changes necessary for duration. You can still do that here. Um, I pick three items. I'm gonna re-prescribe all of them. You can change these uh, dates. You can change the instructions. Uh, if you make a change, you can say, you know, change dose. Don't make a change up here. It will eliminate the, um, 
drug identification number and it'll make a custom drug and you'll have a major headache on your hands because you can't undo that. So leave this field alone. And that's how I do it, save and print. What do I do with that fax copy they sent me? Acknowledge it, file it. That's not good enough to send it back with a signature. You need to keep your EMR updated. If and when we get e-prescribing, this information will be shared with probably the PharmaNet cloud or some other database, and it'll go back and forth bidirectionally. And I give an efficiency tip here. If you have an RNIP, or if you have um, a very talented MOA, you can have them preview that and make sure there's no prescriptions there that are not in your EMR already, like it was prescribed at a hospital with some specialist. They can um, highlight that for you. They can make that a lot more efficient for you. They can scan it in for you as well so you don't have to deal with that. Um, they can do those kinds of things to help you out. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Those uh, discharge summaries you get, the consults from your you know, favorite specialists, if they've added a new medication, um, we all read that, of course, right? Well, add it, add it to the prescription and say, you know, um, doctor psychiatrist prescribe this. Now, this wouldn't be what I would send to the pharmacist, but I would save that as a, um, you know, maybe I won't have a quantity and whatnot. It'll just for one day. But when I refill it, I'll take this off. Excuse the uh, typo. Um, and and uh, make it a proper prescription. You know, again, your samples, those, um, oh, I don't know, the uh, the uh, Norvast you handed out or the Simicorp puffer or whatever, um, write it in. Um, don't just say sample given because, you know, you want to know how much, what the instructions were, all of that is important. Yeah, and another point. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. When you're doing that refill list if from the pharmacy, if you go back to the prescription list, um, a little trick is to tick off the boxes in the same order that it's listed in the list from the pharmacy facts, mm -hmm. right? And then when it prints, it'll be in the same order. And the next time the pharmacy sends you that refill, you'll find that it's still in the same order. So and what you mean is then don't missing. tick here, but just re-prescribe this no, no, one. No, 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 no. Click, yeah. click off the refills, but do it in a different order, right? Top, then go down to the bottom and go to the middle. Just choose a bunch of refills. Like, like that? And then pick one in the middle. Okay. That's gray. Doesn't matter. Okay, now uh, click the reacts, and you'll see that it'll go top, bottom, middle in terms of your drug list. Top, bottom, middle. I trust you on that. I didn't think it would do so, but uh, Ramapril uh, is in the middle. And I kind of kept this order. Oh, did it? Yeah, it did. But if you okay. click here and here and here, it will show up in the order that it shows. I mean, if you want things to line up and match, if you have that degree of OCD, then do so. Um, and I actually do that. I actually do that because, you know, it, it helps me um, be complete and know that I've checked all the uh, uh, items. Otherwise, you get that dreaded phone call. You missed something. Yeah. And like uh, John has mentioned with the good housekeeping, another plug for PCNs is that we've got uh, pharmacies and a lot of the pharmacy um, pharmacists, sorry, and some of the PCNs available to support med reconciliation. And um, also your RNIP or any LPNs can do some good med reconciliations for you, which really helps with housekeeping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could be a, a great QI project to do. If you're writing a uh, consult letter and you see a Ramapril 2.5 and a Ramapril 5 and another Ramapril 10, you know what happened. You didn't discontinue the earlier lower doses. So that's a good reminder that you might have to spend a half a minute and do some housekeeping, you know, do it then, it's done. And, you know, it'll be more accurate for everyone. The next one's asking for a review of, um, so it's a signature, I do not use a mouse, just a trackpad. I'm not quite sure that was Jennifer Wickens. Um, um, you can generate a signature with pretty much uh, any device. 
Um, I just got tired of a trackpad and the mouse. It, it was very awkward. And I have loops, you know, with a J and whatnot. Allison, your signature seems relatively easy. I just got tired of it. Um, and, and the stamp, you know, is used in so many uh, e-forms as well. Uh, so I think we may have given a talk on, you know, how to set up signature stamps for e-forms. It's the same signature for prescriptions and consults. Um, and again, uh, I, I believe that Well has this built in to any Well instance of Oscar, but it may not be enabled in yours. And I don't know why that is. Um, there are, again, uh, Herb and I have had a lot of discussions about this. My stamp is retained. Even my signature when it was um, uniquely generated was retained. Um, is that good or bad? That's debatable. Um, I think the, the whole reason for this is um, authentication. And if you could be authenticated, great. I would propose that uh, if you made a signature and they send it back to you, say, did you sign that? Uh, if you don't have a copy of that unique signature, how do you know? Other than for a date and a timestamp. And again, it only is an issue if, you know, there's something suspicious going on. Um, and hopefully professional judgment would um, bring that to uh, to your attention. John C is asking, is saying he's having problems with long-term meds getting buried down the list in gray color when using the re-prescribed long-term med button. Any suggestions? Ooh, uh, are they truly long-term meds? So this is that plus sign here, where if I click that, all the long-term meds should show up. So unfortunately, the opiate and the razzalaz is uh, long-term med, as you can see here and here. Um, and, and sure enough, you know, this long-term med is, you know, way down the list. You could have created a long-term med from 10 years ago that's still on the same dose of Synthroid. Um, if you want to see all your long-term meds up at the top, click on this display. There they are. And if you see long-term meds that shouldn't be there, this is another quick way of finding them and uh, changing them. So again, this is a, you know, a feature that's built into the latest version of Well Oscar. And Herb has a way where you have to re-prescribe this drug. Oh, I already have it queued up. And basically, um, saying, you know, discontinue and changing everything to zero, taking off that long-term designation. And I would send that to the pharmacy. Once you print and paste and send that to the pharmacy and, you know, whatever other drugs you have, they know they can update their list. So that's good. And this goes into your chart when you paste it, of course. So, you know, okay. So uh, um, do that and, and, and maybe even here, you know, say no longer needed. Maybe that's all you need to say. So let's see what happens here. I'll pretend I fax that, I'll paste that. And I'll refresh this just so I can show you that this pink purple bar corresponds to this pink purple bar. And this is that notification of discontinuation and why. And this says discontinued. So, you know, if you um, added a comment, discontinued because the patient had a cough from the ACE inhibitor, then you'll know when you search for, you know, what happened to that ramipril, that's what happened. It's in your chart. So add these useful cues. You may remember, but then your partner who's really filling the prescription might not, um, you know, have had that conversation, but it's written down. So it's there for, for those who um, look for it. Uh, Shamila is saying, can you find the quantity for a cream or solution to prescribe using your EMR drug database? So uh, no, <laughs> not easily, but I would, um, point you to this website, which I think is fantastic. Um, I think it was created by pharmacists in North Van. And um, here, I'm just gonna open a new tab. It's called Drug Search. 
www.ca.ca. Um, it's fantastic. If you want to know um, how many doses are in Sibogart Turbuhaler, I have this bookmark so I can find it. You will see that Simbacart 100 has 120 doses. That's what the DS means. And you'll see the cost as well. And they've enhanced this significantly because um, the, the web uh, designer has created uh, references to special authority and the different plans and so on and so forth. So this is a wonderful um, a, uh, resource. And geez, wouldn't it be even better if it was integrated into our prescription module? That was one of the things that I had suggested about eight years ago. Um, anyways, this is a great site. Uh, creams, well, you know that certain creams, you can order any amount. Um, let's see what Betnovate, Betaderm. Okay, well, let's see what that shows. Uh, it'll tell you the cost, but you know what? You can set whatever amount you want. But if you're inclined to order a certain amount, say 30 grams, 50 grams, well, create that prescription and save it as a favorite. And then you don't have to rewrite all that, you know, do all that painstaking work over and over again. Now it's easy to refill it obviously, because if you did it right the first time, you just click the R-E-R-X or checkbox. So yeah, use this website, drugsearch.ca. It's, uh, it's local, it's, um, uh, it's, it's BC uh, specific. Awesome. Uh, Dr. Killily says timeline drug profile with a question mark. So <laughs> um, I would add my question mark to that too. Um, there are features built into Oscar, uh, which are still mysteries to me, where I'm just scratching the surface. Um, it's a different view, obviously. Um, this print I've not used because it actually prints everything. Um, I don't know how useful that is. Um, then there's the reprint, which I showed. Re-prescribed long-term meds is the same as clicking that plus sign. And I think this creates an interesting graph. Interesting. What would you do with it? I don't know. I'm sure it was useful for somebody at some point. Um, there are ways of... Um, graphing medications to indicators such as A1Cs or creatinine. Uh, that goes, comes from the lab uh, side of things. But I don't really have a good use for this. Um, maybe others um, do. Um, DS run, mystery, and doesn't seem to do anything. Okay, I'm sure it does something for Ontario Docs. If you haven't figured it out already, Oscar originated in, in Hamilton. Um, it was designed for an Ontario system. Things you don't recognize are likely Ontario specific. It's colorful. And, yeah. <laughs> All right. And then this one from Andrew G. Is there a setting that can be tweaked? So changing the preferred pharmacy after doing the prescription, does it make the prescription disappear? So this is um, uh, a situation where the order that you do things may not make sense. There's many examples of that, such as when you do a blood pressure measurement and you paste into the measurement first. Uh, simple answer is no. <laughs> so choose your pharmacy uh, early on. You know, my usual conversation goes like this. Oh, and by the way, are you still going to London Drugs in Burnaby? And I might even open this up and say, um, the one on Low Heat in Austin, Okay, you can add details. What you can't do in this setting is put a hashtag number 25. And they'll say yes or no. And at that point, oh, you're, you're using a pharmacy, right? Okay, I'll we'll do that. Click on return to Rx. And then it's updated here. But honestly, if you're, you did 10 prescriptions, especially from, from new, from de novo, instead of just clicking here, um, it's going to be a bit of work. It should be easier than that. You, you should be able to just to, you know, click here, change it here, and have all the work that you've previously done retained. Um, if it doesn't work in your case, then you know that you have to do it in reverse order. 
Have I missed anyone's questions? Does anybody want to come off mute for a minute and ask their own question? Yes, uh, Lauren Verholst here. I had actually put several other questions in the chat, which I haven't got to yet. Oh, sorry. Uh, some of them I addressed directly to John. I think that's maybe why. Oh, I yeah. I, when I was sharing my screen, I wasn't able to find the chat. Uh, I still can't find it. <laughs> um, well, I was, uh, I've got several, but let me ask you two questions. Show us how to check for drug interactions, and is there an INR flow sheet or way of tracking INRs and uh, warfarin dosage and stuff? Um, the answer is uh, yes and yes. Um, I'll come back to this screen. Uh oh, where did you go? So, actually, uh, I'll, I'll come to here. Um, this may not be the best example. Um, so, Oscar had a somewhat uh, um, uh, built in, I'll say, but simple drug interaction um, uh, feature, and it was called My Drug Reference. Uh, it has been converted to something called knowledge, um, K, knowledge to act, K2A, um, and it should be activated in most systems, but over time it's been altered. Uh, I'm just trying to find, I think I have to prescribe something in order to do this, so let me just prescribe something. Hmm, I don't have a good example of that, unfortunately. There's usually a pop-up on the right top corner that allows you to display um, drug interactions. It's not a um, feature by subscription, although I think there is some push to have that. The problem is we work in Canada. Many of these drug interaction um, applications are American-based and they may not capture all the drugs that we have. It may slow down your system and so on and so forth. And for that reason, we don't have them. Um, you may find in your preference setting a option for, where is it? Set my drug ref ID. This is a reference to the old my drug ref ID. Um, you can use my old email address, john yap at shaw.ca. That's just the username. It doesn't allow you to get into the actual account itself. And that may enable some pop-ups um, for you, but I, I would say it's not uh, uh, complete. It's more social network uh, contributions from the likes of David Chan and many others. Um, David Chan being the original creator of um, Oscar. Um, so unfortunately, I'm not able to demonstrate the, um, drug interactions. I know, Patty, do you have that working in your Oscar tests? No? Okay. Um, but um, indeed, I, I'd have to reveal a live patient. I'm not uh, going to do that. You asked about uh, INRs. And yes, there is an INR flow sheet here. Uh, this is not part prescription, but it, it is important because we deal with it all the time. In Oscar, there's also a form that may create a INR flow sheet that may be more uh, familiar. I'll just activate that because it, it, it flows in this uh, vertical manner. Um, I don't use this because it's all manual input. You add your INR, you pick the date, and when you finish this page, um, you have to kind of go into another page. It's very awkward. Mm -hmm. I use the built-in one, which is this INR flow sheet which has to be triggered by a disease registry input that says either you uh, have atrial fibrillation, you have a pulmonary embolus, or in this case, long-term use of anticoagulation. So if you're currently on Oscar, um, you will find disease registry where you would add these specific codes that trigger this flow sheet, which looks like this. And it runs horizontally. Um, it will automatically add the INR values that come in from the lab, which is nice. 
it allows you to add the next input based on you know today's date, uh, whatever the dose was. I have to check back. Previous dose was 35 milligrams per week. And it allows you to add comments. Um, INR 2.3, um, good, same dose, and recheck in one month. Now, clever people have created workarounds, macros, Grace Monkey scripts that do all of this with one click, which is wonderful. And as you can see, I've been clicking back and forth and free texting all of this. Um, so this is how it's done. This is not prescription per se, but this is important to note because I will say that in this comment section, in any comment section for that matter, you don't want to use apostrophes. You don't want to use quotation marks, less than signs or greater, whoops, greater than signs because that's actual um, coding instructions. And put in the comments, it kind of messes up the text. So, and it won't save properly. So don't use contractions, okay? Um, you might have to actually write less than whatever, 2.3, if that's something you want to comment on. But you can add complex instructions such as, um, you know, take Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, right? Uh, skip a day and start next day. So when you save this, the wonderful thing is it goes into the chart. And that's why I quote the INR is 2.3 and so on and so forth. Now I can call the patient or I can ask my MOA to call because that's what these tickler functions are. And this is a grease monkey feature where I say, please call about the INR. That's two clicks and I send it. And I'm not gonna send it because my MOA will wonder why I asked them to call this pretend patient. Okay, so that is your INR flow sheet. And as I mentioned, I know a physician who has created a one button click email instructions, uh, et cetera, because the instructions are 90% of the time the same, recheck in a month, same dose. So in terms of workflow, if I can just uh, follow up question, you would do this flow sheet, copy it into your notes and send a tickler to your MOA to make a phone call. Right, and then I bill for it. Yeah. I think that uh, clever physician uh, set it up so it does everything with one click. It, I have to see it in action because it uh, sounds like something I would want. We are oh. rapidly running out of time. There is one more question I kind of like to hit here from Mel. Uh, they mm -hmm. haven't used Oscar in a while. They were on profile. They uh, like to know math active meds auto populate into chart note from Pharmanet. Is this an option with Oscar? Like, are we integrating Pharmanet with Oscar at all? It is not an option with any EMR yet. But I hinted to e-prescribing. I think that's the way of the future. I think it has to be um, to reduce um, forgery, uh, improve authentication. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Pharmacare wants to do that so they can sneak in their lowest cost alternatives and put in their special authority algorithms. Um, I, I think we, we need that. And get rid of those silly duplicate prescriptions. Um, so the answer is no, but what do I do? I pulled up PharmaNet profile, I printed a PDF and I upload it into the documents here. And so I can reference it. And if you uh, don't already know this, if you sign up with Care Connect, which is provincial, and it costs you nothing other than the hassle of you know, doing all the security checks, you get PharmaNet included for free. And I think you get Main Pro for actually going through the process of signing up. <laughs> Check it out. Really? Okay, I missed out on that one. <laughs> Bonus. Okay, well, and thank just you. To add to that, the lot, accessing it in real time is much better than having a, a copy of something, too, just in case there's, because it's constantly changing or could be. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, PharmaNet um, display could be so much better. Uh, it could include such things as repeats, still uh, pending, 
Um, and, and many other things that, you know, those who use it are still, you know, agonizing over why can't I, you know, know when this was prescribed. Uh, you can, um, in my view, I can see who prescribed by last name only, but that's usually not enough. Um, used to be able to get their college information, actually. That was a Medinet system. But hey, it's, it's still um, uh, worth it, uh, despite some of the deficiencies, and now it's free. So there's no excuse, really, not to have it. Okay, I think we should wrap up. Uh, again, great questions. Thank you. Um, I saw on the attendee list a lot of familiar names, people I've met uh, over the years, um, helping them out, set up their Oscar and learn how to use it. Hopefully this is helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, if you have further questions, um, share them with um, Oscar BC and I can try and address them. We'll try and address them. Hey John, could you uh, uh, take down your screen share? Sure. There we go. There we go. And thanks to um, Herb Chang as well. <laughs> we love your input. Yeah, there was a quick question here, I think, about using UCI or Care Connect. Um, I would go with Care Connect if, if at all possible. I would too. UCI requires a VPN. Uh, it's a special uh, setup that uh, is extra. And who loves to do more work than they need to? Um, we decided against UCI simply because Care Connect had everything I wanted. It's provincial. I can get um, extra reports from Kelowna, um, from Prince George, from Vancouver Island. Uh, um, it's fantastic. Yes, and thank you. Thank you to all for attending this morning. Uh, great, great turnout, and thank you, Patty and and. Uh, Allison and John for your work, incredible amount of work there, John. And uh